hello today we are here with another fun color challenge and i thought it would be cool to go in a specific order based off of the different color and themes that you all chose so today we are doing a blue mermaid theme i've always thought mermaids were cool since i was young and i haven't really done any projects with blue other than this shrug and probably like two others so i'm pretty excited to go ahead and get started when I think about mermaids, I think about the ocean, pearls, shells, sea foam, seaweed, crowns, etc. For fashion elements, I think of flowy and silky fabrics, mesh, glitter, sequins, and more. For a color palette that blends with blues and mermaids, I love palettes that incorporate different shades of light blues and teals, as well as added colors that blend well like lilacs and dark purples. Here is all of the yarn that I am going to be using for this challenge. I also have some yarn in my closet that I think would complement the blues very well. Um, I bought all of the yarn ahead of time, so hopefully this is enough. I also bought some of these cute pearls, and these look like, like little teardrop pearls. I thought they would be cute to try and use, and also these little seashells and stuff. I don't know how I'm gonna use these, but we're gonna try and make it work. I thought this mohair would be cute to have texture in whatever I decide to make. This one right here is so pretty. Like, it definitely gives off the ocean and mermaid. <laughs> I'm not that great at uh, describing things, but it's cute. And I thought this would be cool for more darker toned and it's also a gradient type of yarn, so I think it's really cute. I first made myself a little color palette with the yarn colors that I had, plus any other extra yarn that I thought would complement the blues. Then I finally got started with designing the pieces. Here is what I've thought of so far. I usually don't show the designs beforehand, but I wanted to talk about them a little bit. So I think this would be really cute for a wearable. Um, it's just a basic bra and then really flowy sleeves. Um, I'm really excited to try this one out since a lot of the the sleeve portions will be very flowy and free-handed, so we'll see what I can do with that. And then I thought of this as an accessory. So this is basically like siren ears in a way, but I just don't know how I'm gonna go about it. I wrote down a little bit of like a detailed thing for me to follow so I can potentially make this because this would be really cute if I could do it. And then over here, this would kind of like go on the back, like a little mesh top area. I was thinking, but I'm not sure. There's also this one idea that I have, and I don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna try. We're gonna try to make this a four-piece challenge. Um, it might just be three if this doesn't work. However, there's no harm in trying, so yeah. For the mermaid top, I first wanted to break down everything that I had to do to get the top to look how I wanted it to. I first started by breaking down where to start with on the bra part and then figured out the placement of the sleeves. But then I thought it might be easier to create a tube top and then add a scrunch so that there wouldn't have to be a tie in the back or anything. I was a bit conflicted and after playing with the ideas in my head, I decided to go with the tube top version. Before I could actually get started though, I had to unwind the yarn. Will I invest in a winder one day? Day. who knows i kind of like the arm workout honestly i thought it'd be cool to make the top be kind of a gradient kind of like the ocean where the water starts light and then gets darker the deeper you go so i decided to make the tube top section with the light blue first for the tube top section i first created a chain of 73 and made sure it fit around my chest it was tight but that's good because crochet stretches and the more i put the top on the more relaxed the yarn gets after i made a couple rows of single crochet and i didn't really think single crochet would be the best idea for the front of the top so i decided to take it apart and do the lemon peel stitch instead the lemon peel stitch is just a single crochet and then double crochet back and forth until the end of the row. The lemon peel stitch was going good until I realized I forgot to add the sparkly yarn that I wanted. So I had to start over again. 
what a great way to start. I got started for the third time, including the sparkly yarn, and made around 16 rows of the lemon peel stitch. I placed it around my chest to see if the length was what I wanted, and it was perfect. I then slip stitched the sides together and tried the top on. It fit perfectly, and so I decided to move forward and add stitch markers to where I wanted the sleeves to be. For the sleeves, I started them the same way I started the purple dress in my purple crochet video, just because that's the perfect pattern for sleeves for me. Basically, I added my yarn to one of the stitch marker stitches, chain 39, then worked one row of half double crochet until I got to the beginning, where I slip stitched to join in the round. I then did three rows of half double crochet, one row of decreasing in every other stitch, and then three rows of half double crochet again. I repeated this on the other arm and was ready to start the main focal point of the top. So this is what the top looks like on after I did the sleeves and the front part of it. It's really, really cute. I'm really glad I did the lemon peel stitch and used the sparkly. I think it's really cute. Um, the only thing is that I noticed after I did the sleeves that I replicated the pattern for the purple dress onto here but what i didn't take note of is the fact that the yarn was a different size and so i made this to be i think i think i, I made it 70 stitches long but i made the other one 70 stitches long because the yarn was a lot smaller so that means that this isn't as fitting as i'd want it to be and like as you can see right there the sleeves should have been a shorter chain as well. So what I'm gonna do is after creating all the sleeves and stuff, I'm gonna add like a little ribbon in the back just to make sure that the sleeves stay up and the top stays up as well. So I'm just gonna add like a little tie. I didn't wanna make a tie, which was the whole purpose of making the tube top section, but you know, I wasn't thinking clearly, so. You gotta do what you gotta do. I got started with the first sleeve, which if I'm being honest, yes, I did plan out what I was gonna do for the design, but at the same time, I had no idea how to execute it. So as I got started, I was actually feeling really nervous, but I just went at it one stitch at a time and just did what felt right for me to do. I tried not to be afraid of making mistakes or failing, which I honestly felt throughout this entire challenge. And thankfully it came out cuter than I thought. So after working on the sleeve and taking it apart because I messed up and then doing that again and then taking it apart again, I finally got to where I actually like the sleeve. Um, the whole entire thing is completely freestyled the same way I did the skirts. Like I added the layers the exact same way. I added this little hole here by skipping seven stitches and then chaining 14 and then working into the eighth stitch and then going from there just to have like a I don't know, this was really random, I can't explain why I did it, but I really like how it came out. I might add another layer to this part because it doesn't really hit like the midpoint of my hand, but at the same time, if I block this, I feel like it'll be a lot longer, so I don't have to do that. I'm also holding it right here because if I don't hold it, it's just gonna fall. So I'm also gonna add like a little bow to right here and then it'll be able to stay up exactly where I need it to be. But I think it came out really cute and now I'm gonna do the same on this side but not really. Like I'm gonna still make it gradient like the ocean but I am gonna switch up the stitches here and there like for this. I just randomly put double crochets, treble crochets, whatever's after a treble crochet. I just did random things like I don't think I can explain it very well because it was just really random but yeah I'm gonna go ahead and get started working on this one and then the top will be done for the second sleeve, I started with a normal row of double crochet, but at a certain area which was randomly chosen, I skipped 7 stitches by chaining 14 and then working a double crochet into the 8th stitch. I then continued the double crochets around until the end of the row. For the next row, I did a row of treble crochets, making sure to work into each chain stitch of the chain I created in the last row before working the rest of the row normally.
For the next row, I did double crochet with my mohair and sparkly yarn, and then the row after that is where I began to increase to make the sleeves more flowy. To do this, I did three double crochets in one stitch, Then for the next two stitches, I did one double crochet into each. Then I did three double crochets again in one stitch. Then one double crochet in one stitch. And then two double crochets in one stitch. I repeated this pattern of three, one, one, three, one, two until the end of the row. After that, it was basically all freestyled. Here's a little chart of the different rows and layers for the sleeve in case you wanted to know any of this information. For the bow in the back to keep the sleeves up, I first attached my yarn to the 16th stitch from the back of the top and chained 41. I then worked single crochet down the row until the end, where I then slip stitched into the chain stitch, then into the stitch next to it before working down the row again. I did this once more for a total of three rows, then slip stitched into two stitches before chaining one and cutting off. Here is the first project that I completed, which is this cute mermaid top. I was really scared that the sleeves weren't going to come out as I wanted to, and technically they didn't. I wanted more like layers on like sections, not rows, and I wanted to be more flowy. However, I still am really satisfied with how they did come out, and I really like how I did the whole gradient thing where it st starts off at the top of the ocean and then it gradually gets darker the deeper you go and i think that was a pretty cool little concept to include i really like these ruffles here they're supposed to be sea foam that's why they're white and this is what the back looks like right here it's very secure and it it holds very well like this is not gonna fall off if i didn't add the ties in the back this would not stay on at all but overall, I'm pretty happy with it, and yeah. To start the jellyfish, I first created a magic circle with 12 double crochets to start with. I then worked it the way you would tend to when creating a large circle, which was one row of all increases, then the next row increasing in every other stitch, and so on. Here's a little pattern of what I did. When I got to row 7, I decided this was a good enough place to stop the top of the jellyfish and worked normal double crochets around for 2 rows. After the 2 rows of normal double crochet, I tied off and made another circle with 5 rows of increases. At the end of that circle, I tied off as well and then slip stitched the circle to the inside of the jellyfish on the 5th row. Once there was a small gap left to slip stitch, I took some of my scrap yarn and stuffed it on the inside until I was satisfied with how puffy the jellyfish was. Then I finished slip stitching the gap closed and the top half of the jellyfish was complete. After, I attached my yarn to the end of the jellyfish and began making four half double crochets into each stitch to create ruffles. I thought this would be cool since jellyfish have a bit of a ruffly texture to them. I don't explain things well, so here's a photo. 
After I finished all the ruffles all around, I slip stitched into the first ruffle of the row, chained one, cut the yarn, and pulled to secure. It was now time for the fun part. For the tentacles, I did a combination of swirlies, chains, and random strands of yarn all sewed into the bottom part of the jellyfish. For the swirlies, all I did was do random chain lengths and then half double crocheted into each chain four times. I made three of the swirlies, seven of the chains, and four of the strands. To attach them, all I did was take the end of the yarn and put it in my tapestry needle and then just weave the ends into the bottom of the jelly. I spread them around in random places, but also in a specific way so that it wouldn't feel empty on any of the sides. The last thing I did for the jellyfish was make a chain of 15 and then weaved it into the top of the jelly so that it could hang wherever I decide to put it. Then the jellyfish was complete. The next thing I have to show is my jellyfish. This came out so cute. The only thing is that I kind of wish that, you know, this bottom part that you attach, I kind of wish that I attached it to like this part of the blue, like the last row of the blue instead of the second to last, just cause I feel like it's a little too flat, but I still think it's really cute and I really like it. I love the little tentacles and I, I like to imagine that these ones that I use the mohair with, th those are the ones that like electrocute you the most. And then these ones here are like more gentle on you and stuff, but I wouldn't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have this little hangy thing to hang it up. And I actually hang it up right over the door. I'll show you. Look how cute he is. And then when you walk in, it looks like this. When I was designing, I mentioned that I was going to try a design that I knew wasn't going to work or something like that. And yeah, I didn't even try it because I just knew for sure it wasn't going to work. So I was stumped for a little wondering what I should do exactly for the third design. I knew for sure I wanted to include a shell, but I don't know what it was going to be. But I knew I had to make something with shells because what's a mermaid without a shell, you know? I didn't want to make a bra since I already made a top, but before I thought more of the design, I began practicing making a shell and I don't know why, but I was struggling for a good four hours trying to follow this diagram on making a shell. I've been playing around making diagrams with my crochet book, but I still kept messing up with this one and I felt so sad, you guys. Like, I was thinking of how much of a failure I was and everything. I was literally staring at the ceiling wondering if I should delete my channel. If you must know, I get a bit dramatic when I'm frustrated, but I finally figured out a way to do the pattern to the way I liked and went ahead on deciding to make a small shell bag. For the shell, I followed this diagram here and changed it up slightly. I first began with a magic circle and chained one. I then added six single crochets into the magic circle and then closed the gap in the middle. After slip stitching into the first stitch of the row, I chained three and worked two double crochets into the next three stitches. After, I added one double crochet into one stitch before chaining two and turning my work. For the second row, into every gap, I added one half double crochet, a chain one, and then another half double crochet. If you're making this, make sure you're adding it into the gap, not the stitches. Before moving on to the next gap, I chained one. So it's basically a half double crochet, then a chain, then a half double crochet for each gap, and then a chain one before working into the next gap until the end of the row. Mm -hmm. 
at the end of the row, I worked a half double crochet into the last stitch and then skipped chaining before making a half double crochet into the chain three I did in the first row. Before starting the third row, I chained two and made sure to add a stitch marker to the second chain stitch since I'll be working into the chain at the end of each row. For the third row, I worked the same pattern of one half double crochet, one chain, one half double crochet. In the chain one space, I made in each stitch on the last row. So if I spread the two columns like this, this is where I'd work the pattern. Then before working into the next gap, I make sure to chain one. At the end of the row, I work a half double crochet into the chain two stitch, chain two, add a stitch marker to the second chain stitch, and then turn my work. Here's the pattern again that I followed. I just mainly replaced the double crochets with half double and started the pattern differently, but besides that, everything else is the same. Once I was done creating the shell, I chained one at the end of the row and cut a tail. I wanted the bag to look cute and mermaid-like, so I took a small sewing needle and added my yarn into it before adding small pearl beads through the needle and onto my yarn. It took forever to add all the beads onto the needle, but I added about 60 beads, and I think you can make a cute pearl necklace this way. I got started with slip stitching the beads onto the shell. To do this, I found the first area where the large chain spaces are, and went down to where they first started forming, and inserted my hook under one of the spaces and back into the front so I could attach my yarn. I then put my hook right under the space above it and before I slip stitched, I made sure the purl was pushed all the way down towards my hook so that when I do slip stitch, the purl stays where I slip stitched. After that, I repeated this pattern, putting my hook under the next set above where I just slip stitched, pushing my purl down towards my hook, and then slip stitching. I worked all the way up the columns, making sure that I worked into the last space at the edge of the top of the shell. After, I chained one and cut a tail to weave in. I repeated this for the rest of the gaps on the shell, making sure all the pearls were popping out the way I wanted them to, and it looked decent. Then I attached my yarn again to one side of the bottom of the shell and worked down 11 stitches with half double crochet. It can be anywhere, but I had to make sure the stitch I chose matched the second shell, which it didn't, but oh well. After reaching the 11th stitch, I chained one and worked two more rows of half double crochet, which creates the little bottom part of the shell. Once I finished two rows, I chained one and cut the yarn. After the show is complete, I took the time to weave in all the ends that the slip stitches and attaching yarn created and got excited because it was finally time to put the bag together. I attached my yarn to the end of the second ridge of the shell at the top and added the stitch marker to the same section but on the opposite side so I could have that specific gap that I wanted for the bag. I then attached my yarn into both shells and worked a single crochet down into every stitch, making sure to slide more pearls down the yarn to give it a nice edging. Once I got to where my stitch marker was, I chained 101. Then I worked three rows of half double crochet up and down the chain, making sure that when I did reach the end of each row towards the bag, I slip stitched into one of the stitches so that the strap was attached evenly. After I finished my bag strap, I weaved in all my ends and the bag was complete. The last piece that I have to show is this shell bag. I, you guys, I went, I was so irritated and sad and frustrated just trying to make this tiny bag. Like I don't, I don't think I emphasized it enough in the footage because I tend not to record when I'm actually frustrated, but 
Oh my gosh, I spent forever trying to figure out how to make this um, shell. And I know it's not even that hard. Like, I just don't know what was going on. And then I was like, what am I even gonna do with this shell after I make it? But I finally was able to come up with something and I really like it. I wish I added more pearls to like the ends right here because it looks kind of weird the closer you get to it. And then this is what the back looks like. But I thought it was so cute, especially when I made these little um, mohair bows. Like all I did was mix the sparkly yarn and the mohair. And I think I chained like 41 and then I just tied them onto the handles. And it's like perfect just to hold like tiny things. I think it's just super cute. I was finally able to include a shell because I knew that mermaids and shells go hand in hand and I couldn't leave it out. You're probably wondering what happened to the little ear clasps I made a design for in the beginning of the video. Well, I tried to make it and honestly, it was just a disaster. I didn't know how exactly to use wire with crochet without the wire flying all over the place every time I created a stitch. and. I did try. Even though I knew I was failing, I still continued since I like to trust the process, but this process was just not to be trusted. So I scrapped it and tried a different design, which was supposed to be similar to a hat that Caroline Polachek wears in a photo shoot for her newest album. I chose a switch for my crochet book and got to work making my own version. And well, it looks like I have a jellyfish on my head. And it's unfortunate because I can't even undo anything that I did because this specific yarn is like the type that you can't really frog or anything because the fibers kind of get interlocked within each other once you start crocheting with it. So I'm stuck with this uh, jellyfish hat. <laughs> I mean, if you want a jellyfish hat just like this, then all you really have to do is create a magic circle until it fits like right here, the top of your head and then just choose a mesh stitch and then work it in the round until it reaches your forehead. And then all I did was add like some ruffles to the top and then I did these little swirlies the same way I did the jellyfish. And that's how I made this uh, weird hat. And like, I feel like this could have been really nice because I've seen the Caroline Polachek one and I've seen a couple other cool mesh hats so I was like, oh yeah, that would be perfect for this video. And it came out like this. So yeah, <laughs> it's very fun. I'm gonna take it off now though. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed all of these projects. I was very iffy and insecure about this one in particular and I didn't have as much fun with this one as I did the other two, mainly because I was struggling so much with the shell bag and when this didn't come out the way that I wanted it to, I was I was pretty upset, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but hopefully the next one I'll have more fun. Um, just a little sneak peek, it's gonna be the color pink. So if you have any cool fun theme ideas for pink, just let me know down in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!